Hi, welcome to Amazing Psychology. I'm Priya Vergis and I'm thrilled to have you with me today. We'll be looking at a few topics on the infancy period with specific focus on the uh, hazards during the infancy period as well as the different physical developments that occur during the infancy period. So without wasting more time, let's just go and take a look at it. look at what the hazards during the infancy period are and also the physical development that occurs during the infancy. As you can see this question has been asked, the physical and psychological hazards have been asked in the question paper in combination with the characteristics. In the previous class we already looked at what the concept, characteristics and adjustments during infancy phase are. Right now we will be looking at the hazards and the physical um, developments during the infancy phase. Hey there, I'm on page 32 and I hope that you are too. We're looking at section 3.5 which are the hazards during infancy period and as we talked about in the previous class, the infancy period is one of the shortest development periods once the child is born. However, it's also a time when many hazards can affect the child's growth. So the hazards that are affecting a child are divided into two types. The first is physical hazard and the second is psychological hazard. Let's look at some of the physical hazards that are faced. The first is complication at the time of birth. So let's say that the mother is trying to give birth and uh, unfortunately a normal delivery doesn't happen and a cesarean has to be opted for. In the case of cesarean births, there is a chance of anoxia occurring. What anoxia means is a temporary loss of oxygen to the brain. You know that the child has been used to uh, receiving oxygen from the mother's umbilical cord. So when the cord is severed and the cesarean birth takes place, sometimes the children are not able to quickly take a breath in the new environment, which results in anoxia. Sometimes if the number of seconds that pass before the child is able to breathe is more, severe brain damage can occur. And if you use too much of medicine during the time of birth also, that can also result in serious complications. The second problem is multiple births. Now if the child is a single child, then it will get enough room to move around in the mother's womb and enough nutrition. But when there are more than one child in the womb, such as um, twins, triplets and even more, uh, the children who are born tend to be much more smaller and weaker and they don't have enough room to move and so they also tend to be born premature which only increases the trouble that they have to go through to adjust to the new environment. Now if a child is born post maturely you might think that being born post mature is a good thing but it's not exactly a good thing because the child or the fetus becomes slightly much bigger than um, a normal child who is born at around 280 days. So at, because of that, they might have to use a lot of instruments or some form of surgery to take the child out, which can also result in hazards. The next one is prematurity. That is when the infant is born much before the time and it is full term. In this time also, the child's lungs are not fully developed. It also depends on how early the child is born. Anoxia can also occur because of premature birth if the child's respiratory system is not fully developed. So now let's look at the psychological hazards. You might think that it's just physical hazards that can affect a child and the child is not aware of its surroundings. So how can it be affected psychologically? But that's not true. There are lots of things that can affect the child psychologically. Let's take a look at them. The first is traditional beliefs about birth. The child doesn't have any beliefs about birth, but its parents and the extended family that it is born into does. Some people believe that if the child was born uh, going through a long uh, labor and there were lots of complications during the pregnancy and birth, then they say the child was born through difficult times so it more or less will have difficulty during the entire lifetime that it is living on earth. That is a belief that you have and that belief that other people have who are helping you grow up or who are providing you everything that you need till you become a full-fledged adult, that will impact you. Another belief is that muhurta or the right time of birth should have been there. If the child is born at a certain time and that does not fall under an auspicious star, then that is also believed to be a not so great birth, which can again affect the attitude of the people around the child towards the child. 
The next is helplessness. A child when it is born, especially firstborn children, the parents are not really aware of how to take care of the children. So they have to rely on many doctors and nurses. The child has to be passed around from doctors and nurses. And because of this, the child doesn't get the complete care it needs from the mother. So that helplessness gets rooted in the child, um, in the psyche of the child. The next is the attitude of the parents. Now the attitude of the parents can vary towards the child. We just looked at one which is the auspicious time of birth or if there were pregnancy complications. But there are other things that also affect the attitude. For example, the gender that is born. If the parents were expecting a boy and they got a girl, that's going to affect their attitude towards the child. If the child is constantly crying and has difficulty in um, during breastfeeding, that's going to make them tired and irritable. Then if there were um, unexpectedly the arrival of twins and triplets when they were only expecting one baby, then that can also cause a strain on them because of the financial problems that they will face. So again, the parents might have a not so great attitude toward the children. So we just finished looking at the physical and psychological hazards. Let's go through them once again. The physical hazards are complications at birth, multiple births, post-mature birth, premature birth. and the Psychological hazards are different traditional beliefs regarding birth, the helplessness at time of birth, and the attitude of the parents towards the child. Now let's look at the physical developments that occur in an infant, that is between the ages of um, zero and two, that is from the time of birth to two year old. This is a phase of rapid growth, like we just saw in the last video, it is a very, very rapid growth stage. During this stage, the child's birth weight doubles in the first six months and triples in the first year. So if the child was born, like um, if the child was about three kgs when it was born, by six months, it'll be six kgs. And by one year, it'll be nine kgs. There is heavy expansion of the head and the chest. And because of the growth of the head and the chest, this helps in the development of the brain, the heart, the lungs, which are vital organs for survival. And the bones during this stage slowly begin to harden. You know that the bones are relatively soft when the child is born, but they slowly begin to harden. And there's a soft portion all over the skull. The skull is soft. These fontanelles, which are the soft part of the skull, begin to calcify or harden. The brain weight also rapidly increases and by the end of the two year, which is the infancy period, by the end of the infancy period, the brain would have already reached 75% of its adult weight. Now let's look at the different factors that affect the growth and size of the child. We know that environmental factors will definitely affect a child as well as their genetic inheritance. Let's look at what the environmental factors are. If the, if the mother is going through severe nutritional deficiency, this can result in impairment in growth and intellect of the child. Whereas if the child is overfed, then that child has a predisposition to become obese later in life. Um, let's look at what other activities the child does during the infancy period. A newborn infant normally sleeps most of the time, only awakens up during the feeding times, but the number of waking uh, periods gradually increases by the um, by the age of three months yes by the age of three months the children would have acquired a pretty regular schedule for sleeping and feeding and bowel movements and at the end of the year um, the number of hours during which they are awake and the number of hours during which they sleep are almost divided equally now let's look at a term called maturation maturation actually refers to a universal sequence of biological events in the central nervous system that permits a psychological function to happen. This, of course, depends on how healthy the child is physically and what kind of an environment the child is developing in. If the child is in a development, is in um, a physically healthy state and also is living in a healthy environment, then maturation happens pretty much on time, maybe even early. So what do you mean by maturation? What is this sequence of biological events in the central nervous system that permits a psychological function to appear? Let's take an example of puberty. You know that during the ages of 12 to 15, children go through a lot of biological changes in their body. 
there is the release of hormones from the pituitary gland which is located in the brain which then causes a whole cycle of other hormone or changes in the body and puberty occurs in the children in the case of girls they start getting periods but you know that the age ranges from 12 to 15 and that is because some children get that early or maturation happens early and some have it later it all depends on how quickly those biological events in the central nervous system happen in the child okay so we have finished what the um, physical factors are in development of infancy we looked at the different types of growth that are seen in weight in uh, the size of the chest and uh, brain weight we also looked at some factors that will influence the growth and size like environment factors like um, nutritional deficiency and overfeeding and we looked at what is the tendency of the child mostly during the initial years which is uh, sleeping eating bowel movement all of that and we finally finished with maturation which is a universal sequence of biological events in the central nervous system that permits a psychological function to appear i hope this was clear to you if there's any questions that you would like to ask me please leave it in the comment section below and um, please do like share and subscribe i'm really excited to have you guys with me and i hope you're enjoying the class and it's helping you leave me a note to let me know how you're finding it thank you so much see you in the next class